Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue. Urbania is a game I originally reviewed eight years ago, and in that written review, I decided to keep the game. Since that point, I've played it a couple more times, and in today's market, I've decided to go ahead and release this from the collection and purge it. Let me tell you why. The game itself is a light city building game that I actually enjoy. The graphic design, the choices of the artwork and the colors and the blandness and just the mess that it creates on the board was one that didn't speak to me and kind of took away from the game for me. And it's something I find myself not wanting to go back to. It's a light game with some interesting decisions. Do you draw cards? Do you build buildings? Do you hire somebody? What are you going to do on this turn to maximize the points that you're going to get? This is a game that's totally let down by the graphic design and the colors used in it. The publisher really let the game itself down. I feel like this could have been with different styles and different colorization uses and different graphic uh, usage or choices they made, this could have been a bigger hit. Even though it's still a solid game, and you probably could find this game at a pretty good price, I would tell you to go ahead and take that plunge. As for me today, this market, eh, it's going to be a purge. Here's Urbania. You can see you're going to be building up these, uh, remodeling these giant buildings inside the game. Those who can, build. Opening up, you'll see a rule book, which we'll take a look at in just a few minutes. You're going to have a board here, which is really just a bunch of hexes and a way to score on it. This is where you'll be building up your city, and this is where you'll be scoring and doing things down here. Just a little tracker on that. Then you're going to get a number of these tiles. Pretty thick, pretty nice, but it's going to look kind of bland on the board. You're going to get a number of little meeples for scoring, and little doodads, all wooden, very nice. You're going to get some building cars, uh, not the thickest things I've ever seen, but they're pretty easy to use. You can see the corners here. And then you'll have these cards here, which will be your scoring cards, kind of teach you how. Some additionals if you go over 50 or 100. Your people here, uh, the, the pictures are okay, not crazy about those. And these will be kind of the end of game scoring cards that you'll be utilizing during the game. These cards, I like the way they fit. I like the size of them in my hand, but they do feel a little bit thin here. Here are the rules for the game. You can see a picture of all the contents here, which is a huge plus. I really like that quite a bit. You're going to have setup with a picture of setup over there. You're going to have how to score the specialist. And what you're going to see here is it's going to fold out. I'm not a huge fan of this because you have to kind of read it like this, but it will come in. And then you're going to have the end of the game and the credits and kind of how to use some of the cards that you'll find in the game. I prefer this to be more like a book, but it does fold out. To play the game is very easy. You have four possible actions on your turn. You can take two and you can take the same action more than once. The first possible action is to take two cards into your hand and then you replenish them from the deck. Or you can take from the top of the deck. So if you ever played Ticket to Ride, this is the exact same mechanism that you're going to have here. Second thing you can do is you can renew. And what you're looking at here is you would take one of these and you can give this up. So in this case, I could give up six of anything because this is wild. So what you're looking to give up are these helmets that would be on these cards. So let me give you an example. Like, for example, if I had this card in my hand, I could play this helmet this pink helmet down, and I would build this, and I would get two points for doing so, and that would be up, over, turned over, showing that it's been renewed. So you use these cards. Now, if these cards have coins on them, then after you spend it, you put this card down in front of you because you'll be able to use these coins at a later point. The third thing you can do is you can hire one of these specialists. As the game goes on, you'll be using these tokens to move the specialists up every time they're bought. So for the first time, I would buy it, it would be one coin. So if I wanted to buy this person, I would have to spend one coin, and I would do so from these face-up cards that were on the table in front of me because I've already spent it, or I can play these strictly from my hand. So I would play this one coin, and I would take this specialist, and this person would be in front of me. Now, somebody can take this away from me by paying two coins. So if they pay two coins, they're going to draw a card, but they're going to take two coins, and they'll take this specialist away from me. So that's how hiring specialists work. You're going to have these cards that you can take. These are the project cards. If you meet the qualifications, each one's going to do a little bit differently. You have to give up one victory point for every 10 that you have. 
and then you'd be able to claim one of these. You can claim up to three of these project cards that will score points at the end of the game. Now, each of these specialists, going back to these guys, are going to score you victory points at the end of the game. So you don't score for how high they are. That's just the cost. But each of the buildings, will every time a red building is created, it will go up one. This is how many victory points. So the more red that are built, the more they're going to be worth at the end of the game. The specialist is going to be able to score your cards. So since this one is red, I will score victory points for whatever the red is on for how many buildings have been built. At the end of the game, whoever has the most victory points wins. You get victory points for building these buildings. You'll get victory points for the specialist that you have. And you'll get victory points for these upgrade cards that you have. Very easy game to play, especially if you ever play Ticket to Ride or anything else. The majority of your points will be coming from this. And these will kind of be your modifiers to get additional victory points at the end of the game. And these project ones that you can have based on how the board is coming out. And that's Urbania. Who should buy this game? Anyone who's willing to look overlook the graphical issues with the game. It just becomes a mess and your eyes are going cross-eyed trying to see the game at some point. If you can deal with that, you're going to find a very good light city building game that a little bit more abstract than the city building, but it works here. And I think it works as a solid experience. It's a lighter game. I don't know if non-gamers can jump into it, but basically lighter gamers can definitely get into this. And I think the game is very teachable. You're going to do two or four actions on a turn. There's only four possible actions. You may not win, but I think most people are going to be able to follow through and make important decisions during the game and not create an unbalanced situation. Very fun game. One I kept for over eight years. That's the last time I did my review of this. Now it's going to be a purge of some other city building games that have come out. I just enjoy it more. So for me, this one will be a purge.